the mistake of reinvention. What do I mean by reinvention? APIs are good, right? You know, anyone that's been sort of, unless you've been living under a rock for the last year, has seen that, you know, it's all about microservices and API and functional programming. You know, if you want to be one of the cool kids, you've got to have the word API somewhere in your resume, on your code base, on your GitHub repository. It's all about APIs. We've known this for a long time in the database. If you've ever been on any presentation or white paper blog post about SmartDB, it is the fact that SQL just floating around out in your application universe is generally going to be much harder to manage and much less performant than if you can consolidate SQL into Peel SQL libraries. And this is the example I have with a customer that said, we've been trying to follow your advice, not necessarily mine, but basically as an Oracle practitioner, we've been trying to follow the right practices. We have a Java application, there's SQL everywhere. We've been pushing that SQL into Peel SQL routines because we've been told it's the right thing to do, but we're having problems. So I went and visited them. And the first thing I said, well, show me some of these APIs. And we simply went and looked at user objects where the object type was function. And you had some examples that they had get answer name, get assessment name, get gem. They had dozens and dozens of functions. And I was actually pretty, already pretty chuffed because it's a big challenge nowadays sometimes to get people to embrace Peel SQL. They're like, oh no, I'm gonna do it in Node, I'm gonna do it in Java or whatever. You know, uh, It's hard to get people to say, yeah, there's intrinsic benefits to having your code tucked down in, in Peel SQL. So I was like, yeah, we're, we're, on a, we're on a winner here. I went and grabbed one of these things. And so, well, let's see what's in this code. Maybe it's just badly written or bad SQL, etc. But they were all very clean, neat pieces of code. For example, I picked the one get gender name. And so you could pass in an ID, which is like the primary key of the, of the gender, and you could get the name. So you could take in a, a meaningless key, the surrogate key, and you could get the meaningful piece of information back. So ID one could come in and gender might come back as male, ID two, female, etc. That was most of their functions. Take a surrogate key, get some meaningful data back. And it sounds good. You know, so far I look at this, I look at this customer, I go, okay, you've been moving your SQL out of Java. Fantastic. You've been building APIs in Pill SQL. Fantastic. The code looks neat and clean. It all looks good on the veneer, on the surface. I sort of it suddenly dawned on me, I said, but users never enter keys. A user never types on their application, I'm interested in primary key 1784932. They just don't do that. They're, yeah, a surrogate key they are blissfully unaware of. That's why they're surrogate keys. So if users never them, what uses these functions? And it is an all too easy trap to think, well, what I need to do is move things into Peel SQL. So this is how their Java started. Their Java was, okay, I'm getting some information from the person table. I'm getting their last name or their, their full name and they're getting their gender ID, but the gender ID is useless. So I'll make a call to my Peel SQL function to get it. And to their credit, they went, this is not a, this is not a particularly intelligent way of doing things. I can do it all in one SQL. I'll just do this, select ID, first name, and why do a separate call? I can get it all in one SQL statement, get gender name. And that seems good as well. And then they said, well, we can take this to the next level. I've got lots of different surrogate IDs on, and this was actually a hospital application. So I've got patient details. I've got the gender ID, the suburb. So I've got get gender name, get suburb description, get hospital name, etc. So with the best of intentions, they've moved SQL to Peel SQL. They've consolidated definitions and they're writing views to expose that information out to the outside world. And it's like, you know, if you've ever seen the Avengers final movie where they do some experiments on a computer, they go, hey, time travel. Yeah, look what we've invented. Well, this customer was the same. They were very, very excited. But what they'd really done is simply reinvented the join. That's all they'd achieved. Because if users never enter surrogate keys, the only way you're going to use those functions where you pass a surrogate key in to get a value is from one table to another. They've reinvented the join that the database provides. Here's where their performance problems lay. When I did some tracing and some explain plans, these are the telltale signs that you too can use when you're looking to see if someone has reinvented a piece of Oracle functionality. They would do select from patient details, this view that you saw on the previous slides, where hospital equals Princess Margaret, it's a hospital that used to be up the road here. And there's no clue from the plan. The plan will never tell you that it actually had to do a whole lot of other stuff. But the key is your stats. When you start seeing recursive calls, that normally means you're doing a lot of parsing because parsing involves recursive calls. But once something has been parsed, if you still see a lot of recursive calls, 
that's a telltale sign that you're probably calling, for example, a peel SQL function, which then does more SQL inside your base SQL. So if you're looking for if you look for high recursive calls on your stats, that's the telltale sign that perhaps things aren't correct. And you can see 92,000 consistent gets, all of which in these recursive calls. If I simply rewrote the thing to do a join, which is of course what databases are designed to do, the thing was then 88 consistent gets. I really felt for these people because they literally simply misinterpreted a really excellent philosophy and piece of advice in terms of consolidating code, putting it in Peel SQL. They just walked down the wrong track. If someone had discovered this early in the piece, I'm sure they would have came back uh, along the right track, but they had a huge refactoring exercise uh, to sort out this. So things to look for. If you're having performance problems and you want to see if developers are reinventing database functionality, the ones I most commonly see are aggregation. The amount of times you'll see a code which loops through a cursor and simply says, oh yeah, I'll add things up as I go. It's the sum function. And if it's more complicated, it's normally a sum analytic function, but it can be done in SQL. And as an example here, joins. The thing that leads developers astray and as DBAs, you really want to be involved here and try to, to help them on that, on that journey is the module specification. Because often the module spec will say, go get each person for some criteria and then check their gender, check the hospital details, check this, check that. And each one of those will be some piece of code that probably already exists and the developer goes, code reuse is good. And we head down that path of looping through and inventing the join. So aggregations and joins are the ones that really, you really want to be on the lookout for and avoid that critical mistake of reinvention.